We're live. Thank you, David. Welcome back to the Sauzcast. All we talk is money. All we talk is money. And today, all we talk is dating. So I'm your host, Adam Sauzek. I'm here to help you build your wealth, save that money, but also win the money game and the dating game because it's all a big game out there. So special guest today, we're going to let them introduce themselves, Victoria, Rebecca, and the man Rolo over here who was just on the PBD podcast 48 hours ago. Now he's back. Remix vibes. Um, so without further ado, why don't we uh, introduce ourselves so the guests know who we are, so the people know who we are. Hello, people. I am Victoria. I was the queen on Matt James's season of The Bachelor and the goddess on Paradise. And now I'm just Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> you were the queen. You were the goddess. Now you're just back to being Victoria. Yes. Well, lovely to have you. Thank you. Who else do we have here? I'm Rebecca, and I'm very humbled to be sitting next to the goddess. Yeah. And the queen. <laughs> and the yes. queen. It was a really big deal that I just found that out right now. <laughs> I'm very excited. Yep. I'm Dr. Rebecca Nicholson, and my field is conflict analysis and resolution. And I am Rolo Tomasi. I am the author of the uh, internationally best-selling mm -hmm. series of books, The Rational Male. And very rational he is. Mm -hmm. So, uh, ladies gentlemen welcome to the show all we talk is money all we talk is dating let's get into it yeah so i wanted to start off with more of a lighthearted topic because i feel like we're gonna have a spirited debate conversation women's perspective male's perspective how does that relate to money socioeconomics careers relationships all that fun stuff that's the conversation that we're gonna have today so stay tuned it's gonna get uh quite juicy i think we'll see but I want to start with a light topic right now. It's Valentine's Day coming up in the next couple of days. It's what I would call Valentine's Day weekend, right? So usually Valentine's Day, I feels like in the middle of the week on a Wednesday, random. But this is on a Monday. So I feel like Saturday, Sunday, people are going to be doing their Valentine's Day thing. So my first question is, um, where do you stand on Valentine's Day? Are you pro Valentine's Day? Or, ah, I hate Valentine's Day. And where or where do you or do you have a relationship? That's what I kind of just set the tone of where you're at with Valentine's Day and your relationship. The queen goes first. Okay. Um, I don't have a Valentine, so maybe it would be different <laughs> if I had one. But I also feel like it's Super Bowl weekend, not That's really true. Valentine's weekend. <laughs> Ooh, we're going to be covering some Super Bowl stuff today, but yeah. yes, well played. So, um, but I do feel like Valentine's is a little overrated. Like you should always get your significant other presents, um, flowers, champagne, or like should be a weekly thing. Now, when you say you should always get your significant other, do you mean the guy needs to get that for the girl? Or do you bring flowers and champagne for your man, uh, Miss Queen? That might be weird. Okay, so <laughs> you're saying... The guy When you say be. you should always, the guy should always be doing that for the woman. I think so, yeah. Okay. Dr. Nicholson? Okay, I do not have a valentine. Okay. And I will There's a lot of guys in the chat that are like, what's up then? Okay. <laughs> Maybe this is my good time. All right. <laughs> Just drop your numbers. It's fine. There it is. Enter right now. Eric, I pick think a winner. Valentine's Day is an enormous pressure for men. I've always thought that. It's this pressure of you have to do the right thing. And if you don't do the right thing, you're going to pay for it for the rest of the year. These really hidden, ugly messages. When I was dating, I have a lot of boyfriends. So like all, hey the, time okay. I, <laughs> no, all of the time when I was dating, always the joke with the boyfriends was... We would let the amateurs have Valentine's Day because we had a good time all the time. We were doing just like Victoria exactly. said. Yeah, we're just like, we're always, always, always happy. And so like when it comes time, that idea that you have a one day a year, it's ridiculous to me. Okay. Plus, it's Aquarius season and Aquarius season is about the individual. It's not about mm -hmm. love. Really? Yeah. Well, I'm an Aquarius. I just had a birthday. I turned 40 again somehow. Um, Are you a cuddler? <laughs> and what's that? Are you a cuddler? Cuddler? Yeah. I could cuddle. Most cuddle. Aquarians don't. I'm breaking the mold, y'all. Good, good. Um, and the, uh, Mr. Tomasi. Yes. Okay. You're, I, do your have a, I do have a Valentine. I've Ooh, had one for about yeah. 26 years now. Let so. us know yeah. about this, bro. Yeah. Let us know about this Valentine. Uh, well, okay. Uh, I have actually written several essays. You won't find them in any of my books, but I've written several essays about Valentine's Day because that's mm. a very it's a very common uh, question I get right around now. And um, usually it's uh, what should I do? How should I measure? Uh, very similar to what you're saying as far as performance uh and uh, how to sort of make her happy kind of thing. It's like, this is the one day you're going to try to make her happy. And, and this is like date night. And it, it's yeah. very contrived. And I think that that's the, the I think the biggest problem with having a special holiday for it. It's, it's very contrived in the sense like, well, 
um, this is the only time I'm going to do this, or this is when the expectations are up on me. Uh, the other thing is that it's very commercialized too. So let's just be honest. I mean, uh, I don't know if we have the if we can call it up, but there is uh, there's data on like how much the average guy spends on mm -hmm. Valentine's Day, um, and then I think it's also contrasted with like how much a, a regular like a like an average wedding in the United States yeah. costs. Well, I have too. some stats for you. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say. So I mean, here we go. Let, speaking, let, there's a lot of money involved. Let's in all get this your too. thoughts on this. So here, so they, this is CNBC. They broke this down. Um, they said, who, number one, I want to get your guys' thoughts. Who do you think spends more collectively on Valentine's Day? New couples, two years or less, or couples that have been together longer, two years or more? Who do you think? And I'll give you the numbers. I think new couples because it's, like, more exciting and you're really, like, celebrating it and showing it off. Got it. So you're going with new couples. Dr. Nicholson? Yes. I'm going with old couples. Old because couples. I th Or couples who have been together, yeah, more together longer. Yeah, together longer, Because you have more baggage, and they're probably <laughs> trying to do this yes. compensation yeah. thing to okay. make up yeah. for it. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's the make good day. Yeah, uh, that's I, it. I, you know, I was leaning towards younger, but I think now I, I, I want to say <laughs> Okay, older. well, yeah. uh, happy to say the queen got it right. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. According to CNBC, new couples spend on average $250 during the holiday, whereas couples who have been together longer than two years only spend 175 And then they break it down by generation. So they say Gen Z spends X, Millennial spends X, Gen X, and then Baby Boomers. Of those, who do you think spends the most? Gen Z, which is basically like college-aged uh, people in their you know early 20s. Millennials, 30s-ish. Uh, Gen X, that's uh, Rolo's mm -hmm. age, like in their uh, 40s, 50s. Mm -hmm. Or boomers, 65 plus. Who do you think spends the most? I feel like the youngest group, what was it? Gen, uh, Gen, Gen Z. Z. Because you have to flex on the gram. So. <laughs> you do got to flex on the gram. How yeah. about you? I cannot say anything as trendy as you just did, but I'm going to go with millennials. <laughs> okay, you're going yeah. with millennials. I'm going to go with millennials as well, simply right. because I think that like when you look at like the statistics for guys mm -hmm. uh, you know, being sexless these days, it's usually Gen Z that's the... that contributes to that that majority okay so you're both you saying millennials, uh, that's what saying i'm going with i gotta rationalize well, it all the queen is wrong this time you no! guys got it right it was the millennials spend <laughs> shockingly more than any other generation gen z spends on average 164 millennials almost 300 dollars 294 gen x 182 and boomers ain't spending shit on one another they've been married forever yeah. they're spending 120 bucks okay get me out of here now here are the most <laughs> common purchases on Valentine's Day, the overwhelming me, uh, overwhelming me allowed, why can't I say that word? Overwhelmingly, uh, majority of people spend uh, money on candy, 56%, then cards, 40%, then flowers, 37%, then jewelry, 22%. So does lingerie even figure I into that? I was thinking it. Lingerie. Well, let's have that conversation about lingerie. Who's, are you buying that for your wife? Is it your man, you want your man to buy that? I think the woman would buy it to gift her presents. It's like, here's a present yes. for you. Lingerie that for I'm going to wear. That's how I've okay. been, too. I'm good with that. Yep. Okay. Now, where do handcuffs fit in here? That says that 2% of people <laughs> buy handcuffs. Has that ever been a purchase you've made? You're an Aquarian. You should know this. Yeah. Well, you know, yes. Should a man buy lingerie for a woman, or should a woman buy lingerie for herself? And then huh. I you think can it's both. both. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've been... Does it, is, it, is it a different, like impetus i guess is there like something like is a different message if he buys it for you as opposed to you buying it for him to want to turn him on i'm thinking do you have I, this right now is it different yeah but like i feel like if you as the female are buying the lingerie i mean i even buy lingerie single i do it for of myself. the of the lingerie you own mm -hmm. how much did you buy and how much did other like a guy Boom. buy for you um <laughs> Mostly, I I bought most of it myself, mm. but sometimes I'll like go shopping with a guy, and he'll buy it for me. Yeah, I've been that dude, by the way. Quite frankly, like we're going, <laughs> it's a shopping day. We're going to yeah. Victoria's Secret, Queen Victoria's Secret. It's like, okay, I'm there. I'm the fucking boyfriend. I'm walking in a, and I just stand there like a schmuck, like all the other boyfriends do, and we're like pretending to only focus on our girl, but there's like a hot girl. Like, okay, all right, and just keeping it focused, but then. You don't want to get the girl like the wrong size. Like as a guy, you understand. It's like I got you a medium. You know I'm a fucking small. It's like you know. I worked at Victoria's Secret for a while. Oh really? I specialized in men who looked very uncomfortable yeah. and lost. Bingo. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so what'd you do to these men? Say hey, because these guys know 
when they walk in the store, whatever their girl wants, they're, they're going to get. They're terrified. Yeah, they're not going to mm. be like, I don't know, honey, that lingerie is a little expensive. It's like, dude, you're in the fucking lion's den. Yep. Uh-huh. Like, you're spending money, whatever it is. Bras, and bras are like 50 bucks a pop. Boom. You're buying four or five bras, some lingerie. Like, it was you're going to spend time. four or five hundred bucks. No problem. All they wanted so, was what, direction. Would you coach these guys up? Let's hear this. I would say... How big is she? <laughs> so, like, <laughs> How big are the titties, girl? Okay. Yeah, like, what are we dealing with first yes. off? It's like, um, what is she like? Does she like something lacy? Does she like something cuddly? Like, what what, uh, what area of the store are we going into? Yeah. Oh, is she not there? No, it was always them. Oh, the them. dudes are it walking. It was Christmas in... time, and so yeah, it was always these men. Oh, they're who, solo. Yeah, yeah, they were mortified. It was. It's like very a, it's funny. like a girl going onto a car lot by herself. Yeah. Instead of like the guy goes on to, into a lingerie store by himself. I they feel like they the, feel vulnerable. He could just get a <laughs> gift card for that. For this? No, no. Like I'd so rather we'd go into the rooms and we would narrow it down. So are we here? Are we here? Does she want garters? So like, and they'd be like, yes. <laughs> it was so Why weird. were they nervous? I don't know. They were intimidated. Was it by you? Was it by the shopping? I mean, you're tall. You're both very tall and lovely. So like, I could see why people would be intimidated, especially if it's like, oh, what am I doing in this store? But the next time, I will take exit interviews and have that information. Yes, for you. please but get I us that information. Time. Well, here's a here's a question. We're, t- we're talking, we're setting the table here, but th- ultimately you're familiar with the five love languages. Yeah. One of them is gifting, right? Oh. There's a, so where do you guys stand on the gifting component? You've been married 25 years, 26 years. You know, for instance, I think there's like act of service, physical, uh, touch. F- physical touch, physical affection, quality time, quality time. Like every girl I'm with is like, God, you want my quality? I'm like, we spend every second. Go, no, that's not quality time. There's, um. <laughs> Acts of service, quality time, physical touch, gifting, words and of words of affirmation. Exactly. Big. So, Rolo, hmm. where do you and your wife stand on the gifting category? I think that it would be a different situation between myself and my wife. Like when we talk about uh, gifts or compliments or mm-hmm. cards or whatever, it's usually um, when I'm talking to guys about that, they say, "Oh, should I give her a gift?" Or nine times out of ten, it's like a guy is giving a woman flowers. To make up for something mm-hmm. to tell oh i screwed up so i'm gonna have to in fact whenever you're like in an office situation and suddenly the you know the, the front desk girl gets flowers you go oh that guy must have fucked up <laughs> you know that's i mean that's True. what we think right now right. it's not it's not just simply a compliment or it's it's not like uh you know maybe it's a holiday or something like that but if it's not a holiday then it's usually some guy who's trying to make up for for a bad a bad a misstep and i think that's kind of like crazy because that's the presumption we have because men have a burden of performance and if they screw up in that burden of performance they or they're always trying to find ways to sort of catch up and make up to that and so when it comes to like gifts and compliments and cards it i i, I think guys really need to look at it more as sort of um uh, like a reward like if something was like if if you had really great sex the night before or if you uh if maybe you were you something if met a I lot have really more great to sex you. with someone and they give mm-hmm. me a card well, I call, <laughs> well flowers or something hey, like you were compliment. fucking great last yes, night you congratulations were awesome. thank you keep up the good work kid. <laughs> well, it's not so obvious as that i mean it's like it's not it's not as contrived no, as that you. it's not as She's congratulations have to frame it. it's okay. congratulations on the yeah. great sex we but as far okay. as as far as love languages are concerned it's like it, what what's the next pop psychology? I mean, I, I've been in a relationship for uh, with my wife for well, technically twenty six years. We've been married for twenty five, and I will tell you right now that a good relationship, a healthy relationship, has polarity, and it also has um, it's it's effortless. I hate it when people say we're working on a relationship. I agree with you. You're not you're not working yeah. on your relationship. He's working on the relationship to measure up to what your expectations are, and mm-hmm. that's where you come in with like gifts and flowers mm-hmm. and everything else to sort of. How am I going to make her happy today? Kind of thing. Rather, th- and so it becomes this obsessive, like you know, lifelong project, mm-hmm. as opposed to like we're going and doing life together. What, what did you mean by polarity? Because I've dealt with some bipolarity <laughs> and with girls. Polarity what do you mean by polarity that? Polarity in the sense that you you both retain your own identities. Okay. That's, and I think because uh-huh. because uh, mm-hmm. uh, usually, I mean. Today, anyways, I would argue that most men lose their identities in the like trying to become what that woman it, you know mm-hmm. expects the anticipations, the entitlements that that woman has of that guy within that relationship. And again, that plays back into what I call the um, men's burden of performance. And guys take that very seriously. It's like this is how you be a good husband and a good you know boyfriend or the, or what I'm going to be the perfect guy. And the problem is, is that those guys don't understand that perfect is boring. Hmm. Boring. Mm-hmm. What, do, do you have any uh, insight on what he's saying? Either you ladies, uh, so boring, or perfect. What's that? I personally like um, appreciated the part that you said where like you shouldn't be trying to change yourself or it should be easy. 
However, I'm a gift giver, and so mm-hmm. I like when men are also. Like, I, even for my friends, like, I'm always giving gifts. I just, that's how I communicate, like, as the five love languages. Um, so I like when a guy is thoughtful and giving gifts, and I, I don't think it should be, oh, he's giving me flowers because he messed up. It's like, mm-hmm. he's giving me flowers because I'm beautiful. Like, mm-hmm. that's just the way that I... Um, conceptualize my world and for the question of how do we like what's our love language was Mm -hmm. that it mine is quality time like that's how I receive Mm. let me can I ask you a question real quick yeah so you said you're a gift giver correct okay so of the guys that have been you know your boyfriends when you in the past whatever have you ever given a guy a gift that you knew that he wanted, you knew that he liked that kind of stuff. You, you took the time and the interest and he didn't know that you knew that he liked those kinds of things. You just took the initiative to figure out like, oh, this guy's into the sports team. This guy's into this hobby. This guy's or into like, this he music. Needs a printer. Or whatever. Do you, yeah, or yeah, but not so much need, but like, to this print is out what, the card that he's going to give to yeah. you for the great like, sacks. Gonna, this is, keep this up is, the great work, buddy. So this is like what yeah. he's into. And you have the interest enough in that guy to actually go, you know what? I know he's into that. He's never told me about that, but I'm going to give him this gift because I know that that's what he's about. Have you ever done something like that? All the time, yeah. Really? Yes. Hmm. I think. Why do you ask that question, by the way? Well, because most of the time when when we give gifts, whether it's you know Valentine's Day or whatever, it's you. It's usually oh, he needs a printer, right? (laughs) It's it's I'm going to give him what he needs, rather than taking the time to show interest in, like genuinely wanting to be with this guy, genuinely wanting to get like sort of under his skin and understand what he's all about to the point where you're like, okay, he's never told me about these, these things that he's into, but I'm going to give it to him anyways, because I want him to know that I know about that. I'm like that much into the guy. It's, it's a, I don't want to say it's a test, I don't want to test, but it's like showing genuine desire in the sense that he's somebody that you want to get with and you are taking the initiative to, to sort of show him that with a gift. Yeah. I think that's the, the point of gift giving is to like show that you are paying attention and like you care. And I, I think when you get a gift, you're thinking of the person when they're not with you mm-hmm. and then you give it to them. So I, yeah. Here's a question and feel free to answer. Wait, both. can I tell you? Yes, go I'm ahead. I'm not Rebecca. a gift giver. You're I not. I'm really? the one who doesn't <laughs> do gifts. I just, do you like receiving? It's fine. Nah. I just, I don't <laughs> What's care. What's your love language? Sex. Yes. Physical touch. <laughs> yeah. By the way, physical I don't think that physical touch is a sex thing. language too. So wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's like you gotta get on. You need somebody who also likes to do the things that you like to do. Dr. Nicholson in the house. Okay. <laughs> but, Keep going, please. But stuff, I just, I don't. I hear these conversations. Mm-hmm. I don't care. I just, I don't care. But what if the <laughs> gift is like tickets to your favorite performer? Or oh like, yeah, it's nice. Like those kind of gifts. It's fine. It's just um, as far as when we're talking about this, people will talk about, um, just like you're saying, it's this measure of how much does he care based on, oh my God, don't get me started on solitaire engagement rings or something like that. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, like this monetary amount is supposed to be indicative of what this man thinks. Mm -hmm. And it is, and it is not the same burden with the woman. Oh yeah. 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 And so, no, I see that. So like, when it comes to stuff, I just don't fucking care. I, mm. not, I've had very wealthy men want to do things for me, want to give me things. I don't care. And it always throws them off because that's their thing. That's how they do it. I just, I don't want their stuff. All right, send them to me. <laughs> <laughs> but like, what I've always been interested in is who can help me? Who can help me get where I'm going? Yeah. And if they don't do that, I never forgive them. And no. I hate them. You, you said if they can't <laughs> help you get where you're trying to go. They all can is the thing. Okay. And but how, how, how would they help you? Um, something like... Just like here, um, just like with with connections, with you know people who are of um, say a certain status, mm-hmm. they have access to a lot of other people. You're talking about access, status, access. Networking. Like, what can you hook me up with the network? Absolutely. Like, I don't need your flowers, buddy. I need you to make a phone I need call. That's, exactly, that's exactly it. It's okay. all very relational. I work really, really hard, and I adore flowers. I they're wonderful. I don't need your stuff. I'm trying to get someplace different in life, and okay. I would like my effort to be complimented by somebody who supports me. You're basically that. saying, "Fuck your flowers. You Make a phone that. call, buddy. Make a phone call for me." Cost nothing. <laughs> okay, but uh, Queen Victoria, on the other hand, those rich dudes that are willing to fly you around places, 
She would like their number. Now, why do you want... Why? What is it about what she said? You're like, bingo. No, I'm what was just that? kidding. I know you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I no. mean, maybe partially, but like what, there was something yeah. in, in your... like That was like, hold on. No, I'm just kidding. I relate to you as well. I mean, I've been given a lot of things in life, but I also feel very blessed and fortunate that... Um, like, I never hate any of my experiences. Like, I feel like they've always helped connect me with who I need and whatever's meant to be. But, um, so yeah, I was seriously kidding. Okay, well, then, <laughs> then you're a comedian. That was great timing. I was like, totally took you seriously. Comedic um, timing. Best, best thing that comes to mind in terms of Valentine's Day or gifting and then any nightmare scenarios that have happened. Feel free to answer both or one. Any, anyone that comes to mind, like, oh, this one Valentine's Day, like, I'll give you one story. Like, one time, <laughs> I, I don't know if it was my birthday or Valentine's Day, but my birth, I'm an Aquarius, so it's all around the same time. Uh, I was 21, so this was a long time ago. My girl was drunk as shit. She's like, I got some handcuffs, like, whatever. <laughs> and, you know, she was doing her little lingerie thing. Where are the keys? She couldn't find the fucking keys. I was like, babe, ha I'd like to get out. I can't find the keys, man. <laughs> like, we had to, like, go. Call the fire department. Yeah, like, basically. I'm like, this, I'm like, never again. So now, like, if a girl's like, I got some handcuffs, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm good on those. Like, well, okay. maybe you get some rope. I don't know. That's just not my They're thing. They're more but comfortable than you think. Agreed. Yeah. So any things that come to mind like that was an amazing gift or nightmare scenarios feel free to answer both who wants to go first i have a funny one go there's somebody who i went on some dates with and i was like we're good so he shows up in my house and he had four dozen roses i don't know why that number but it takes up a lot of the room 48 roses 48 roses I okay you didn't house. sprinkle so. the petals all over the bedroom no it was more like a drop-off thing because i, I didn't want to see him so i was on the next shows up. you're like dude fuck your flowers i need you to make a phone call for me buddy no, I, was, I was in high school i was on my way to basketball practice i'm like oh um i'm gonna go now okay so it was like puppy love high school he's like no he was older <laughs> you were in high school there here we go all uh -huh. right Jeffrey Epstein in the house. There he is, dropping <laughs> off. So I'm much. okay. I mean, I'm just I'm talking like 18 to 23. We're not okay, all right, all right, all right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, any nightmare scenarios? Anyone that comes to mind? Or amazing Valentine stories? To Everyone's think. stumped here. I think stumped. I think the. Uh, I think people think of Valentine's Day as this like significant moment to sort of make some sort of impact. Like mm -hmm. a lot of married guys will turn Valentine's Day into like date night or the date night. And they'll do exactly that. They'll, you know, uh, rent out the, the honeymoon suite at the mm -hmm. casino hotel and, and sprinkle, you know, petals all over <laughs> them. And, you know, of course she's there with on Instagram going, oh, look what he did. And it's like the most <laughs> contrived thing in the world. And it's like, it, like you were saying before, it's not a, uh, it's not so much the act itself. It's like what's behind it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, I've said this before. It's like the, the best sex that a married couple is going to have is not going to be on date night. It's going to be when they get this close to breaking up and they have that makeup, that angry kind of urgent makeup sex because it's like, oh, I almost lost you. <laughs> that's going to be a better experience than date night on a Valentine's mm -hmm. It feels forced. It feels contrived. Well, because that's real. That's yeah. real urgency. That's real mm -hmm. anxiety. That's sexual tension. That's what we call it, sexual tension, right? Hugely. Mm -hmm. That's why that exists. And I, I think, well, what is it there? More, uh, more unplanned pregnancies happen between couples at, like when they're just about to break up or they're having makeup sex <laughs> than any time when they have date night. You got so. trapped, bro. Yeah. And, okay. that, and then, of course, <laughs> Valentine's Day is, is an occasion for date money. You know, this is actually what we're talking about, something else we're doing here that I don't know if we're saying it right now sure. or not. Sure, go. But it's, it's about dating, and it's that idea. We were looking at how to frame something, and the conversation started with, well, what's that one moment where it took off? And that's what I was exactly where you are. There's not one moment where it takes off. It's an entire experience. From when you sit down, it's the entire thing. It's not just because it does. It puts this really weird pressure on people. Romantic. Yeah. Yes. Men about, have to be the men are the romantics. And if you don't yeah. happen to stumble upon the subject that she really wanted to hear about and connect with you, then it all mm -hmm. failed. Yeah. This is a disgusting amount of pressure. And it's really unrealistic about how a good relationship will go or mm -hmm. even start. Yeah. I don't know because I feel like. You guys are saying the pressure's on men, but at the end of the day, like, the men have the decision who they marry, so I feel like the pressure is a Do lot they? on the women. Do they? Who makes a decision? Who who decides who's I mean, going to yes. be in a committed okay, long-term relationship? If you want to get technical, the woman has to say yes, but the men, the man can, like, decide, you know, if he wants to put a ring on it. Depends on the man. 
depends on who who we're talking about. I think a lot of sure. I think a lot of women get into this idea mm -hmm. that um, that men are the ones who are in control of like commitment when in fact it's usually women are con in control of sex and the and the commitment at this stage um, simply because the guys that m women want to commit with are usually the ones who are hesitant because they tend to be the more high value guys. And so so it's, it seems like men have more choice or men have the have the selectivity, you know, power of selectivity. Well, yeah, the guys that you like the apex example uh, at the top of the pyramid, that's if that's the, you know, the guy that you're after, then yeah, they probably do. But average guys don't have anything near that kind of selectivity. Well, like, let's have this conversation. I don't do average. Yeah, exactly. do average. Thank, uh, uh, okay, point there we go. Let's yeah. have this conversation. So that when we were on the podcast the other day, we mm -hmm. were talking socioeconomics, and you brought up a terminology that was like, oh, boom, mm -hmm. my finance mind went on, because I'm familiar with the word market value and the stock market, and, and you know that's my world, and you brought up the sexual market, the sexual market, market value. value. Mm -hmm. So why don't sexual you explain marketplace, the yeah. sexual mm -hmm. marketplace, like mm -hmm. the stock market? This is a sexual market. Mm -hmm. Would you break down what that is so the, and the ladies can maybe jump well, in as well? Mm -hmm. for, I mean, okay, so when it comes to sexual market value, uh, men and women are different, okay? Let's just put, put that one out there. We're not all the same. We are mm -hmm. actually more different than we are alike. So we have different mating strategies, and as a result of those mating strategies, we evaluate the, uh, the other person, the opposite sex, um, based on different criteria. So for uh, for women, it's uh, it's what we call hypergamy. Okay, so mm -hmm. it's alpha seed and beta need, or alpha fucks and beta bucks. That's pretty much what it boils alpha down to. Alpha fucks and beta, beta bucks. bucks. What, I know. I'm gonna I'm gonna explain. It have to you heard you. this term? And I'm saying this ironically. Okay. Have you yes, heard this term um, hypergamy ever? Either of you have ladies. You heard of hypergamy before? Hypergamy. Mm -hmm. By the way, just full okay. disclosure, this was a word I was very not familiar with until very recently, mm -hmm. and then I went down the rabbit hole. Some yeah. of his videos included. There's a book that I was reading and he actually gave me his book and it's, I'm like, boom, fascinated by it. Mm -hmm. so, so please break this down. So, okay, um, just a, a, a very brief rundown of what hypergamy is. Uh, hypergamy is a term, actually a sociological term that was coined back in the 50s uh, for sociological studies of the caste system in India. Mm -hmm. And they noticed that women of a lower caste always tended to marry up into a higher caste and that's where the origin of the of the term comes from now we have expanded upon that because women want a like short term benefits short term sexual reproductive benefits and then long term security benefits and so that's what we say alpha seed and beta need alpha fucks beta bucks okay so again i'm using those terms alpha and beta as abstractions because i know somebody's going to go crazy in the chat about that Probably so, a beta. Probably so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so when when we're looking at the beta buck side, that's more the long term security side, and we're looking at parental investment, provisioning, and uh, protection. Is that Those, what bucks is? That bucks. Yeah, provisioning. I yeah, resources. Okay. So long term, anything that mm -hmm. benefits a woman in the long term when it comes to long term security, networking. There you go. But, uh, when you were saying that you you value guys who have something that you can actually, uh, you know have a utility for mm -hmm. that would be uh I, I would term that as being uh, in the interest of long-term security then there's the alpha seed like, side i don't know i feel like long term you can't really predict just because like we're in the social media mm -hmm. era everything's happening so fast so like even if you think you have security like that job might not exist anymore mm -hmm. or if you're dating down like someone who doesn't have security he could create an app or something mm -hmm. so that's why like you make a good bet you have to make a good bet on a guy or who's, follow your heart yeah <laughs> like, okay well the problem but, with the problem with following your heart right now is statistically women don't follow their hearts they look for right. they look for a guy They're who is economically attractive and that is that term has been around since you're not saying attractive you're saying economically economically un, well the men are yeah. most men today are economically unattractive let me get your opinion on this and the ladies because i before i even heard of hypergamy because mm -hmm. i grew up in south beach i mean we've known each other for a handful of years I was in the been in the party scene. There's models, there's guys, there's rich guys, you know, the whole thing. And I remember this one time I, I came up with this question, and now I ask it all the time, and I want to get your guys' thoughts on it. Would you rather be with a, I mean be relationship, be with a guy very wealthy, you're taken care of. I mean, you're you're driving what you want to drive, you're living where you want to live, you're shopping where you want to shop, you're eating where you want to you're living your life. But he's kind of a little bit maybe older, a little sloppier, not exactly in good shape. He's not you're not exactly attracted to him but you're attracted to lifestyle that's option a option b hot dude sexy ripped you know good sex funny cool you know all that broke as shit lives in his mom's basement 
Ooh. Those are your two options. The basement got me though. Like I was, I was maybe sold on guy number two, but the basement. I'm just saying he lives <laughs> basement or whatever. But that might be a deal breaker. He's broke. He's broke. He, he lives. He's not. He don't got no money. He ain't taking he lives you in out. A van he, he lives down in a by van down Chris Farley. <laughs> but those are your options: wealthy, but busted. Yeah. You know, broke and like- hot. Who are you picking, Queen Victoria? I feel like when I first met you, I probably would have picked guy number one because I was still experiencing those things. Um, But now I would probably go with guy two. (laughs) You're 20. You would pick the... I'm 29. 29. (laughs) Well, anyway, you're saying that you would pick... But I knew him when I was like 20, so I feel like, yeah... 21, 21 for the record, too. (laughs) 21, I promise you. The nightlife, right? No, but when you're like... You're 21 in South Beach, you're more attracted to those quote-unquote glitz and glam, and then now you can kind of see through the smoke and mirrors and like you're true, you wouldn't be truly happy. So, so who would you be with long-term? The hot guy. The hot guy, but like he ain't I, taking you I nowhere. I would give him some business advice and we <laughs> would start some businesses together. Okay, so you're going to try to get, have him level up. Because this level is counterintuitive up. to the hypergamous nature. Well, she's, she's, like, she would, uh, would want to take a... She would want to take a, a chance on a guy with potential. So yeah. if the guy's hot and he kind of has potential to actually make some money later on, then that's yeah. a better bet than the guy who is not that good looking but has a lot of money. And therefore, it becomes sort of this economic situation when mm-hmm. it comes to, to the uh, women marry a lifestyle. They don't marry a guy. Eh, hmm. I've definitely seen I'm going that. On that. I've You're seen go- that so, a lot. On, r- but um, I don't know. I think like you have choices, so I wouldn't choose that. Rebecca, number one, who would you choose of that scenario? Uh-huh. The 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 wealthy, you know, not so good looking guy, or the uh, broke hot dude? And then what was your counter argument to what Rolo had to say? Who's your pick first? I just can't get into your choices. I you have to. <laughs> she stays I single. I don't have to. So you're just I gonna stay single, that. is what you're saying? You'd rather which one, stay single. Which one would you single. hope? No, which I'm just one saying. would you hope would I change? Know. I don't hope anybody changes. I think that is a foolish thing to idea. I've had those offers. Yeah. My God, if I didn't have some type of, I have this, I have to work. I have this mission. I like, I have my mm-hmm. work to do in the world. I've had that offer all the time of, um, they're done with their money. All they want to do is enjoy their life. Mm-hmm. So there's no room for me to grow. I'm not into it. I've had many offers. Like what kind ma- of offers? What do these offers look like? I see. I thought Marriage. you were going to take out your phone. <laughs> let me show you. Just like, let, me, let me cue it up in my mind. I've had straight up marriage, relationship. We don't have to get married. You can have your own place. You can live here. Uh, there was one. I've actually been offered that as well. Yeah. It's, Guys it, like, are weird. Yeah, and, uh, Meaning they'll take care of you. You don't oh, have to yeah. work. Like they'll you buy know? me a house next door. For the rest of, like, no, like, they the lead, next generation. They would lead have to, with their wallet. Mm-hmm. Totally. The wall. Then there was somebody else. He's like, we would make beautiful babies. <laughs> That's what he just he yeah. like babies. And it's like he said, you'd have you know you have access to this for the, like forever. No, I just it, it's it's like me. manipulative. No, I just it's, um, just like we were talking about the gifts. It just doesn't do it for me. So I I hear these conversations. This is not my reality. This is so not my world. And I know other people like that. But I mean, just so so to your example. No, I'm single. <laughs> so you'd say I'm 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 I'm, no I'm deal. Gonna, yeah, but how no long deal. are you going to stay single for? Though is the question. Meaning until Mr. Wright comes along and who's perfect, he's got She's the an money. Independent woman. I, I got that. Adam, 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 I don't need somebody who's got money. I I don't know if this escaped. I mean, I'm a PhD. I'm an author. I've like I've done oh, she some says things. I don't know if this escaped. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm not. That, I'm I, not like I didn't show up off the street. Okay. looking for somebody not, to take care of. Not me. asking at all, but yeah. I know you probably have very strong feelings on uh, on on what she's saying. No, she, about she's career women. She's, Where do you stand on career well, women? I mean, you're more focused on their she's career. She's a statistic right now. Is what she is. How old are you? If I may ask. Never you ask a woman ask. their okay, age. Not ask. Okay, well, let's just say for, for sake of argument, you're in your early 30s, okay? Maybe okay. you're a little older. Who knows? Um, when women get to that age and they are career women, when they are you know, strong, independent women uh, and have spent the better part of their lives uh, building themselves up to be a, to have a doctorate, um, to, um, to uh, have their own business, your pra- I presume you have your own practice. Yes. Um, and are very uh, your your personality and your ego investments are built up into what your achievements are, 
and you get to a certain stage. Oh, that's not me with the ego investments. Okay, well, yeah. you get to a certain stage where it's like, I'm looking for a guy who is like, why is it do you think she, you're, you're she still single right now? She said she wants to find someone that she enjoys doing activities with mm -hmm. and things like that. I, I haven't think, found the right fit. Yeah, exactly. And I'm not, I'm not trying are to do something. Are you looking for a guy that is like, are you looking for a guy that makes as much money as you, has the same kind of achievement as you, has the same kind of education as you? What I, This is a great question. What I've noticed, I've dated a lot, and so I've tried many different things. The, you can have somebody who's incredibly wealthy and is awful at conversation, just mm -hmm. like makes me want to kill myself. Then there are other, people have very different things that they offer. So somebody who is maybe not as well established, maybe very interesting. Mm -hmm. Then there are people who have you know different kinds of jobs, right? So I've tried, I've tried dating a lot of different people. Mm -hmm. What I find is I need the mind. I really need the mind. Mm -hmm. The rest of it Sapiosexual, is sexual. Uh, no, it's right? just, <laughs> it just I, I need it's somebody who's I need somebody who's incredibly smart. Mm -hmm. It's I just need that, and I need somebody also who is ambitious and really has mm -hmm. in goal like because there are very nice people. And they're fine to work. And this is wonderful. It works really well for other people. I am not looking to breed. I'm not looking to settle down. I'm not looking for any of that. I have work to do in my life. So. Hold on, stop. You don't want to have kids? God, no. What do you mean, God, no? You don't want to have kids? I never have. Okay, why is that? They're terrible. Kids are terrible? <laughs> Aaron so, Clary, this girl right here. <laughs> I feel like. Do you want to have kids? I've always wanted to be a mother. I think okay. it's my life purpose but um like today's world your is life so purpose crazy is to have kids to be a mom okay like i think yeah like i always wanted to be a mom and then um would you rather be a mom or a career woman i think today you could do both i get it i could also i could eat pizza and work out i get it but what like you got to pick one though if i had to pick one then mom yeah of course you'd be a mom but you would obvi you've obviously picked your career that would be my hell I mean, like, no, I'm, 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 what, what I'm is so it, happy for you. What happened that that you were like, that's it? Well, I'm she, never having kids. She's like, a badass woman. Like, what do you mean? Uh, clearly Nothing she's happened. a badass. Clearly she's beautiful. But but you're very anti-kids. Like, you're, like usually like, there's women mm -hmm. that will say, look, you know, I'm open to it. If the right guy comes along, yeah, you know. But, like, you're very, like, steadfast. No, oh. hell no. I got mission. I got work to do. I no that kids. First thing first. When I get to, when somebody even wants to approach me, I was like, I'm, if you're looking for a wife and children, I'm not your guy. You have to or go. Girl. <laughs> I want no part of this. Yeah. So like, don't, don't come around. So I've had people who they'll date me for a while and then they'll think, they'll think that they I'm think going they to change, change my it. mind. Yeah. Oh my, it's, it's really I, a waste of everyone's time. I actually like that really? you're like committed though and know that I've had a couple mm -hmm. girlfriends that are similar and like, no, they don't want kids. Um, so like, I actually really respect that. Thank you. How yeah. come you, uh, let, let me ask you, why are you single right now? Why do you think you're single right now? Because there's nobody I want to be with right now. Is it they're just not forthcoming, or are you just not meeting She's the right guys? She's waiting till after Valentine's Day. Uh, I see. <laughs> I meet mm. I meet men all of the time. Mm. I know what I like, mm -hmm. and when it comes around. What's yeah. the longest relationship you've had? Four years. I usually like so. I have them like three years, four years, two years, like that. See, my 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 read on you is that you are the man you want to date. You, be, you turn yourself into the guy that you want to date. And most women who like are like sort of the boss babes or mm -hmm. the alpha females, what happens is they live these lives where they have to go. I mean, we, when you look at uh, what college, college debt right now, college enrollment, when you look at business, when you look at the fact that women are complaining about guys mm -hmm. not being economically attractive right now, and when you look at that, like I was quoting these stats to uh, to um, Patrick on on the other show, is uh, you know men have to make fifty eight percent more than the woman is making to be economically attractive. But also, from the woman's perspective, mm -hmm. um, you know, guys don't. I, I want to choose my words carefully, but from what I've seen, guys don't want to date a non-educated, uh, goalless woman. So we actually too have to like be our best version to attract the best partner for us. Okay, so you're, you, the, the way you're, you're framing that right now is you're looking in terms of long-term security. Got, like you were just saying a little while ago, is like you want to get with the hot guy, right? You want, like when you were 21, you had a different set of criteria for dudes, and now at 28, 20, 29 years old, you have another set of criteria for them because you're more interested in long-term security from 28 to like 30, 
32, 33, somewhere around there, as opposed to being 18 to 28, when the the priorities were a, were a whole lot different. And for for you, yeah. um, when you're looking at know. like say, uh, yeah, no, well, I, I beg to differ. No, well, well, you know what? Because, because, you're, looking, with, because you're looking at this from hindsight. Right I, I want to hear. I want to hear my so, statistic right so was, now. Okay, so I was, what I was going to say is that most women who are in your demographic, let's say, uh-huh. um, they can't find. They their number one complaint is we can't find a guy who's who's got his shit together. We can't find a guy who's got a college no, education. No, she's saying we can't she find has so many options. This. I know you have those, but you're still yet you're still single what is about those guys that what is if so you have all of these options hold on, hold on, but hold on. you haven't I decided love what you're on saying. any it's of delightful. them mm-hmm. why is the premise that i need to end up with somebody well, like, you, don't have, the, like, you don't have to i'm here, just saying let me, exactly. let me, so let me, let me jump in for a about. second because actually i actually i'm realizing something basically yeah. you're pulling a power move right now and i'll What's tell that? you why i'll tell you you're, you're pulling a power move most women so i'm 40 again 41 um mm-hmm. and i so there's friends of mine that are might might still that are not still married, and even there's girls that are a little older than Victoria. They're on the wrong side of thirty, I'll say, right? What's so, the wrong side? What what's that? The older one. They're older than thirty, you know the the, the older drug. But here's the, ugly terminology. You use. I, it happens. They're on they're on the. You can fix it if you work. They're on it. the o- yeah. other side of thirty. Okay, mm-hmm. um, but they're very concerned with getting married, mm-hmm. having kids, and they're you know like. Like the famous scene, Marissa Tomei, my cousin, my fucking biological clock is ticking. We all know this. You have basically pulled a power move. Like he kind of compared you to the alpha in the relationship. You're like, look, I don't even want kids. So there's no clock that's ticking that I got to waste my time. I don't even give a shit if I get married. I'm good. I have the money. Like every. You're controlling your narrative. You're controlling your narrative 100%. But there's very few women that want that, in my opinion. Meaning. They're not looking to get married. They don't need no man to support. I don't need no man, that kind of a thing. I'm not like an outlier. I, you're an outlier. Malcolm Gladwell would call you an outlier. So you're basically pulling a power move. Whereas the the move typically, what I've seen mm-hmm. is that women are like kind of like they're, they're freaking out. They, you know, they want to get me, they want to have kids. So what do they do as they get older? Lie they about settle. their age. <laughs> I don't know how long that'll last. <laughs> Amongst but other eventually things. Among, they will settle. They'll say, you know what? You know, I was kind of the hot girl when I was 22, and maybe I was like the hot girl when I was 26, but now I'm like, you know, 34, 30, whatever, and like, you Seriously, know, Seriously, it wears off like that. How do you not know that this is no, what I girls do? He Am I wrong right. on this? No, you're not wrong, because like, I definitely have these everywhere. like minor Every girl. thoughts. Go ahead, Victoria. Like, I'm aware of the way that he thinks, like mm-hmm. those thoughts cross my mind, and then, yeah, like I could choose like you, but I think your choice really is you controlling everything. Whereas like I'm choosing to focus on my feminine energy and like um, try to allow myself to open up to the right partner Mm -hmm. because of what I want as an end goal. That's so cool. And something- (laughs) Hey, great talk, buddy. (laughs) No, no, that's fantastic because it's actually something that I was gonna say when, because it's something that you said Mm -hmm. about I've become the man I want to date. Mm -hmm. I did do that. And that's like, um, again, we're talking in this, but that's just not me anymore. And so for that reason, embracing feminine, it is so much more difficult. Yes. So I used to go yes. after, I yes. used to date, okay. I used to do okay. so much, right? Mm-hmm. So like that's that's why now I'm mm-hmm. like, I, it's okay. If it comes, that's wonderful. So you're, what you're talking mm-hmm. about right now is is a common complaint that I get from like women that I, uh, I counsel. On, and as young as say 28 or 29, as old as 40. And they say the same thing. I can't find a guy who is my, you know, socioeconomic equal. I can't find, and of course that means above me. But uh, I, I can't find the right guy. Where you know, and it, it ends up being the sort of litmus test for guys because they're not measuring up to what I want him to be, so that I can have a relationship going on into the future. Whether or not I've that's what that. you want to do mm-hmm. is different. But so the women that are coming to me are saying. I did everything by the book. I got my degree. I got my career. I have my business. I'm I'm making six figures. I've got the you know the apartment in Miami, whatever it is. I got the little dog, and <laughs> and it's like and I can't find any guy who's ready to go forward with me into the rest of my life right now. And the reason for that is because you made yourself into the man that you want to you want to go forward with in in life. And the guys that are going to measure up, as we were saying a minute ago, with the, the apex, uh, you know, example of that guy, those men don't want to get with you. They want to get with a, a woman who is feminine. Woman, they yeah. want to get with a woman who is in touch with her female site. So what do they say? Well, how do I do that? 
how do I get in touch with my feminine side? Because if I say you need to become, you need to develop your feminine side, or you need to embrace your femininity a little bit more because you've been taught over the course of a lifetime well, also, to be the alpha, the alpha female, then you have to dumb yourself down. You have to dumb no, yourself down. No, no, well, no. no I'm I, not wait, saying you do, no. but they feel like they say, so I have to dumb myself down. I've and been I'm like, told that. No, they think that embracing never. femininity means dumbing themselves down. No, no, I'm wearing absolutely dresses. Ugh. No, I'm just kidding. Justice is the best. Hold on, real no, quick, but, you've yeah. been told. We'll come to be Victoria, but you've been told to dumb yourself down. You're saying yes. By who? Why? Everybody, don't. Oh God, I couldn't. don't you do that, girl? I no. couldn't. You never keep that do PhD it. up there. But what does that mean? Who who has literally said, Rebecca? Look, kind of dumb it down a little. Several bit. men. They say what it is intimidating said? to other men. Is what? That's being weird. yourself yes. see, but see when you couch it in terms yeah. of like threatening or intimidating or whatever it's not so much like guys who aren't going to be with you they're just stuck they're the guys that you want to get with, they're not intimidated. They just don't want to have anything to do with you. They're not dating situations. I'm talking about other situations. You're just you saying you're, you're, like, you're, you're calling you're interesting, you or talking, like, talking to you? I, I'm not really sure what kind of construct you've created and then you're talking to me as if I belong in what you're doing. So I think we kind of lost each other a little bit. Like you're, what you're not saying, seeing this her is not as me. a person. You're seeing yeah. her as statistics, basically. Yeah. Well, and I'm not, I'm not whatever box you created. That's what I deal in. Yeah. I deal okay. in statistics. I, I deal, deal with people. in hard, hard numbers. And so. this is why I just deal with people. And well, this is kind of like right we were people. saying that there, uh, this is what, shout out to Fresh and Fair, that he said something that there's the probable and the possible something like that right yeah. what was that what was that yeah the, the the probability or the possibility of you finding the the perfect guy is certainly out there but the probability goes down depending on the choices that you've made and the results of your life mm -hmm. that that are, are ensuing because of that i i i feel that because like i'll never have a high school sweetheart like certain things in my life mm -hmm. de decrease the chances of like finding a certain person like mm -hmm. my college sweetheart was an asshole cheater. Then I Fuck met the guy. lovely Sosnick. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> but like, Did I wasn't meeting think? great guys. No, no. But so yeah, like statistically, I'm like, haven't, I'm like in a different box now because of my life choices. I just find the but I will say funny. that I will say that you have aged like fine one. Like you're a lot, Thank I hope you. take this the right way, a lot more, um, more polished um, and like just you like you have your shit together versus when I met you and like in the party phase. Yeah. So kudos to you. That was here's a, fun a, here's phase, a quote though. that because uh, <laughs> one of the best performing clips on Valuetainment, um, sorry, on the PBD podcast was a comment you made. And I'm going to give a segue gotcha. to this. And you, you, you're going to get it, Rolo. Uh, and it reminded <laughs> me of the quote, the famous quote from Matthew McConaughey in the movie. Um, what's the freaking movie anyway? But he goes. Well, you know, Point all break. right. He, he, no, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Dazed and confused. Thank you. And he says, you know, I keep getting older and they stay the same and age. age. That's true. Stop <laughs> learning about life. those college okay. girls. Right. Well, exactly. So you said a girl reaches her peak, peak market value. Sexual market value. Sexual market value yeah. at what age did you say? 25, 20, I believe. 23. 23. <laughs> Somewhere in there. Okay. Rebecca is like, I don't think so, buddy. Break down I, what that I means. actually feel that. No, I you feel do that. feel that. Because being 29 now, like, like you are laughing at the ridiculousness of it, but it actually is fact. And I don't know if it's just South Florida. I'm jaded living yeah, here. Then is. I lived in L.A., but all this, the big markets are the same where like the guys do really go for the younger girls. And like, I feel like I have less chance of getting married because I'm almost 30. Are you serious? Yeah. Okay. I remember in Miami, I was 27, 27. I just moved down and there was a girl, we were out one night. She said, oh, you know, about kind of like the new tide was taking over. She's like, we're 27. I just started graduate school and I realized like that's what she thought is she was kind of at the end of the road. Mm -hmm. And I look at her and I'm like, we have decided very differently about our lives and how yeah, we're investing in ourselves. Because, but you, you mm -hmm. aren't wanting like the marriage and the kids. Like I am cognizant of the fact that like whenever I have kids, I'm going to be like an old mom. Like I'm not going to mm -hmm. get to be a mom while I'm young. Like that's just the way a lot of women's minds do work mm -hmm. because we do have the desire to have a husband and a family so that's where i think maybe the age thing is mm -hmm. by relative. the way in, in my opinion uh -huh. this is the norm you are not the norm you have decided <laughs> no and i mean that Still in a complimentary lies, way <laughs> like let, let's just clear the air you're tall you're beautiful mm -hmm. you're great great personality smart like 
all the accolades, but you've made a decision. This is what I talked about with the power move. You're like, I don't want kids. So the, the whole age thing, no matter how, like, I don't know if you're in your early thirties, whatever you are, you've basically said, nah, I don't give a shit. I'm not going to play by your rules. I don't even care if I get married. I like, but Queen Victoria over here is basically, in my opinion, 90% mm -hmm. of women. They want to have the roller. I'll turn it over to you for statistics. They want to get married. They want to have kids. They don't want to be an old lady. They don't want to be a spinster. They I mean, realize sometimes that I am like, I could just move to Europe and be the glamorous aunt. Like I definitely. And then like think... adopt 12 cats and then you're that lady. Okay. But you women. Do very, very well. in Europe. But it really women is just do your, like, have a, a, a ticking talk. And yeah. if they want to have kids scientifically by age 32, whatever the number is, the chances of having kids Conception goes yeah down. i mean break yeah. this down from the yes. from an age because mm -hmm. my initial question was mm -hmm. sexual market value age 23 25 whatever it but is i guess well i actually want to interrupt before you say that because there are these like media outlets like such as this where you're giving this information but she kind of is right because she chose her own thoughts whereas like when i'm thinking i have to get married it's because the media has told me are you, sure, also biological, are you sure about though? that? Are you sure about that? It's because maybe there, because there's, there are millennia of women who came before you who felt the maternal instinct just as well. I agree with Rola. And there were Long a lot before of, we had the society we have Rola, right would you please break this down? And there were a lot down? of women mm -hmm. who didn't have birth control available, so the option was oh, not really there. I'm glad you brought that up as well, because hormonal birth control is actually what's contributed to a lot of this. I mean, we've got two different women right here. Totally at, different at, women. Totally, to completely And they're different. playing nice, which Wait, I so, appreciate. So let me, let me explain to you why I say that uh, you know, 23 is the is women's sexual market value peak years mm -hmm. okay first Wait, of, would you please define that term we, exactly i will okay there's a reason why they call the store forever 21 and not forever 41 okay i heard you say that before <laughs> there's a reason for it's that it's really very vile it's very vile but it's very vile yeah. because it exposes you to the raw nature of the sexual marketplace right now which more and more people are going to be exposed to as we since we have the internet since we have access to this information right now and the information is this is that if you go and you look at a, i think i quoted a dataclism from uh, i forget the guy who was the uh, founder of ok cupid but we have data sets right now that will show that um when when men are polled what do they find the mo what age do they find women the most attractive from mm. 15 all the way to 95 they all say right around 22 23 24 years old every single one of them so at, at all age cohorts so when we're looking at women when women say well what age do you find men the most attractive if that woman is say 30 years old that guy's usually somewhere between 33 and 37 years old it's like a three to seven depending on how you know it staggers up for that woman so that woman is always looking for a guy and this is in the long term like if long term you know perspective if that woman is 20 she's looking for a guy who's between 23 and 27 years old going and staggering up depending on what her particular needs are at that particular time which change over the course of a woman's maturity when she's 18 to 28 I was as I was saying before there are different priorities for what she's looking for. She's looking for the hot guy in the foam can and party in spring break in Cancun when she's 18 to 28. But when she gets to 29, that's when she says, you know what, maybe it would be great to go and have babies now or settle down and have, have something that's a little bit more long term. And the, unfortunately, in our society today, we encourage the idea that women have can be their their sexual market value is evergreen. And anything we can sell that 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 impresses that upon women they will buy into that so when we're looking at like freezing your eggs mm -hmm. when we look at um you know find w whatever it is provide your own security through your profession through your education whatever because you can't trust a guy to do that so you have to do it yourself that when you get to 29 to 33 years old 31 years old you get into this epiphany phase where you're like oh I, I don't, I'm done with those jerks. I'm done with the hot guys that I was with back in my 18 to 28 hoe I'm phase. I'm not done yet. Well, maybe you're not. <laughs> you're not done with what? And again, the, jerk? the scale phase. is a little off. Okay. Are you currently in your hoe phase? No, I'm not. Statistically I'm speaking, bro, Eric, men, relax, bro. The average age of first marriage in the United States is 29.7 or something like that. The age is almost 30 years old. For women, it's like 28 or 29, somewhere around so there. That means 29-year-olds exactly are married 20 year olds Exactly where you're at right now. Could you see yourself being with a guy exactly your age? Um, yeah, like sometimes I've thought about that. I would like to be with someone my age. We can like grow old together or I could be with someone younger. So I die first. 
What's the oldest? What's the oldest? You're so funny. Uh, what's the oldest you would date? Oldest. Like realistically, date for marriage purposes. Like real dating. Um, it's weird because I'm 29 now, so I could date older. Victoria, this Maybe. is David. I'm 25. <laughs> <laughs> 25 is. I have That's to see. The... Are you hot? Yeah. You've already Incredibly. met David. You haven't thought twice about him, but he is hilarious. And he so. smells really okay, good. Smells like amazing. Funny. Funny. Is By important. the way, shout out to David. Everybody who watches the Southcast <laughs> knows David. He should have been here today, but he's on behind the scenes. We love David. Anyway, oldest you would date. Mm. And for David's sake, what's the youngest you would date? I need numbers now, <laughs> not not thoughts. Well. I was in um, London and hit it off with a 19-year-old. I did not know he was 19. <laughs> did, he act, did he act older than he was? Was he I more mean, he bought than me he was? two bottles of Dom. Did so. you help him with his homework? What'd you do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, send me the assignments, babe. I got you. No, <laughs> just kidding. Can I hold your book? So uh, clearly, you've um, 19 is the youngest. You didn't know. Did you have to like... Like, I didn't you know, hook up with him, but I... So what the hell are we talking about here? I was, like, interested in him, and we you still talked after. You were his tutor, after. and... Yeah. It was a possibility, okay. yeah. not a probability. 19. I was open-minded to it. <laughs> he must have been very smooth. Uh, hello, mademoiselle. Uh, how you doing, uh, baguette? We love what's an the, accent. W- what's, what's the oldest you would date, Victoria? I would say I would go up to, like, 40... One. <laughs> okay. Well, it's weird because, yeah. no offense, but yeah, like you're 41. So it's like guys that, I, everyone's older now that I'm 29. So I That's feel like I could go, work, yeah. it's weird. I feel would you like date I could a 50-year-old? Yeah, I think 50-year-olds okay, are so really Okay, so we just went from 41 to 50. Rebecca, I wouldn't do hello. 60. Okay, that's your cutoff. <laughs> Rebecca, what is the oldest that you would date and what's the youngest you would date? How old are you? He's 41. 41. All right. Everybody wants to date you, man. I don't know. Hey, I'll you know what it was? It was the statistics that we brought up on the point like, thirteen percent. Thank man. you, Rolo. Yeah, you're right Rolo about sweet spot. Yes. My favorite guy ever. <laughs> People wear their age differently, and so I'm mm-hmm. trying to think of numbers to attach because I don't yeah. do this really. Yeah, age is just a number. Truly. Um, okay, I'm going to say the oldest that I would date is. 125 because I would like to cover all the ground just in case there's something I missed. What? I like okay. options. Okay. Okay. So you would date a 90 year old guy is what you're saying? Likely no. Okay. But, but, but I just what, like to leave it on the table. Realistically, would you date a 60 year old? Obviously we're talking someone who's got their shit together, he's in shape, he looks good. Actually, I did date a six year old. It's when all I, happening. Yeah, about when 19 to 60. <laughs> I, I know, I know a very wealthy man who is 74 years old. He'd probably love you. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> no, okay, no. So, like I, like I didn't face. know he no, was. No, no, Rebecca, Rebecca, Rebecca. She wants to cover all she of her. She said, <laughs> Rebecca, <laughs> would you date a sixty-year-old? Yes or no? Um, it's not really the age that is. I know you're trying to make these questions. Well, I just, you know, yeah. I mean, the, it's it's not the age. It's um sort of how the person is in certain aspects of their life. Would you date a hot-ass, successful sixty-year-old? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> What's, Hell yeah. Would you date a very attractive, possibly French 19 year old? <laughs> For a short period of time, I think yeah, we can really Okay, it there yeah. it is. is. Mrs. Rolo. Robinson. Let's talk. <laughs> hey, Mrs. Robinson. Yeah, actually, that's so <laughs> gross. Somebody said that to me once, and I was like, oh, be gone. Great so movie. Now, Great movie. Ones. Rolo, age difference. Where does this come into, into play? Okay, so. Because you've heard the whole thing. Again, of, it's. It, okay, it's. Hold take, on. Did we just make Can a I joke and now he's going to analyze according to the joke? No, 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 I would never do that to you. Um, Are you I, sure? Because no, it's going to happen no, right now. No, we're not going to make it. Right. No, no, no. They, okay, so av- the average yeah. women don't want to get with average men. Let's just, let's start with that right there. Thank you. Um, average women don't, don't want to get, get with average they men. They want to do better they than average. better than okay. average. So let's just start right there. By the way, there. we're going to pour Wait, Queen so Victoria when some we say average, champagne. Probably. What is the criteria Thank set that we're looking at? You're looking, okay, so when, getting back to the sexual market value question we just had a minute ago, I, I was going to say that, you know, for women, men's criteria, there's really two criteria. Is she hot and is she available? That's pretty much it. What physic, Physique and is she good in bed and is she available? You're saying I for a guy. That's, like, that's for a guy. Way. That's for a guy. Given, okay, so 
for men's men's in, in men's <laughs> innate men's innate sexual mar- or, or sexual mating strategy is unlimited access to unlimited sexuality. And if you don't believe me, just go and look and see how popular I online porn dated is. Guys like I believe that. you. Think of how, think think of how popular you know Pornhub is or whatever else. Think of every all, five minutes, the same amount of pornography is downloaded that is in the same amount of information mm-hmm. that is in the New York Public Library. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Go and look at the stats that uh, on the on the blog of, uh, of Pornhub, and they will show you the very well kept numbers for mm-hmm. the sexual habits of pretty much everyone in the world, but certainly the United States. Okay. So if, with that in mind, remember what I'm saying: men's innate mating strategy, barring any society or anything else, it is unlimited access to unlimited sexuality. Now we can say, well, we want to find the the one for us and you know be important. And I'm not saying that that's not also I do part feel of like that. Men feel that that pressure either Mm. you know from their families or like uh, like I knew someone his younger brother got married and suddenly he's like I have to get married like I do Mm. think men feel pressure as well eventually yeah well okay so here's the other thing is as I was saying before average women do not want to get with average men again statistically speaking women Mm -hmm. want to get with the top 20 percent of guys meaning that lower 80 percent of guys are the ones who are are just have to find an end run around it they've got to get rich they've got to have game they've got to have something that makes them attractive to make up for the deficit that they're not in that top 20 percent of guys well let me tell you speaking on the top point 13 percent over here that we just (laughs) yeah and you being at the top of that thank you thank you thank you for those numbers my ego will never be the same appreciate that for a guy it's almost like like um for a woman for me in my opinion 30 is the number of like when they start to get like oh what the hell is going on for a guy it's 40 <laughs> like i i do when i was 36 yes. i was like i don't give a shit and that bro. Goes, i'm good I'll take and that goes back to what i was saying before yeah. is that it takes longer for men to mature into their yeah. peak when i when i was turning That's 40 why. and i had just dealt with a broke up when i was uh, i was together we were together 37 38 39 and I, and I was like i'm 40 i'm single the world's mm-hmm. over you know, like, and now, now that it's been like a year, so, dust settled, and I'm mission and purpose driven. I'm like, yeah, whatever. When I um, when I talk about the uh, men's peak sexual market value, mm-hmm. it's right around 36, 37, 38 years old, right there. And the reason for that is because women have different criteria for what they find arousing and attractive. So when a guy is right around 35, 36, 37, that's the years in which he has the most potential to have what makes him the most attractive to women. That's mm. that's how I judge that. That's how I, 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 I put that out there. Now, the thing is, is that it takes longer for men to get there. It takes longer for men to mature into, well, that into I their, agree with. yes, I agree. it does. <laughs> and it's not because, it's not because they're we're still in, in dumb no, cavemen. It's, it's because it takes longer up. because men must become and women just are. I was just going to say, you used that quote the other day. And yes. I was like, oh, what the hell does that mean? Well, because when women, women are, women are and men must become, and, and what I'm does not, that mean? Okay. But and I'm I not, I don't know because like Adam even said, like, I was crazy partying when I was younger. And I I feel like I've even dated guys now who are like, no, I like your age that you're older. I can't deal with a 21 year old. I agree. They're trying to work you. No, they're not. (laughs) No, No. no, she does have a point. Like there are 21, 22, 23 year olds running around where it's like, yeah, they're hot. No doubt. Yeah, but, but a lot of guys don't want to. I'm not trying to but, but ask about how you're, you know, how, right. how was class today, baby? Like, What's, I need someone who at least has some substance of what's going on. So for me, 25 liar. to like 34 but is what, great. But once again, were you as were you in your most peak potential when you were in your 20s or when you hit 30 or for where you're guy, at right now? How much money do you have? Where are you guy, at in was, life? I'm gonna, everything else. I feel like from 35 to basically now, I feel like I'm in. You have but the, everyone's on their own journey. So like yes. certain people can hit numbers earlier. Or for me personally, like I thought for sure I was going to be married and have a family. But now I'm so grateful that I didn't and have these other projects and passions that mm-hmm. I've established on my own. So, And on this note, you're from Miami, South Beach? No. no Where are you from? No, I'm so, originally Southern California. Okay. That and makes sense. in Miami? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Something... I'm from up north. I'm from Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. The and north is here, so different. Every place is different. Yeah. When I left here, people said, why would you leave Miami? And my answer, it was difficult to describe, but I said, uh, my soul was dying. Because... I felt that way in LA. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> you're just, you're evaluated so critically. 
And and then, too, it's mm-hmm. kind of fun when you, like, reach the top of everyone's standards and you're like, okay, fuck you, bye. It's just, like, it's not interesting. That's what I realized. Yeah. When I when I went back, I saw a, it was a magazine ad for a yoga, and I was like, oh, my God, that's my body. I was perfect. But it's never enough because yeah, there's I, a million other people, and it's never enough. And so where I am right now, I know I'm like kind of getting hit as if I am supposed to take a partner. I don't want it. I have so much calm i have like i have such a nice life and i didn't have that nice life when all of this headache was going so, on uh, here, here, wait you, what's you, your when's your like birthday like what's your sh- astrology sign I'm oh just cool i'm so happy you asked yeah <laughs> it's uh i'm december 29th so you're a capricorn as well mm-hmm. i'm a capricorn we are like very mm-hmm. loyal hard workers rebecca <laughs> you fascinate me here's my question for you yes how many of your best friends best friends are married with kids I don't have a lot of best friends, but I know everybody who... All your friends from high school, college, graduate school... When I went back up... If there's a hundred of them, how many of them are married with kids? From graduate school, they're mostly from other countries. In general. She doesn't compare herself, I think. That's not my point. But That's what I like. It's not a comparison. I'm I'm asking asking you to say... What's the number? No, I I see them, and they've, they've grown, and they have other lives, and they've they have husbands, and this just isn't my life. What percentage? I think a lot of them do. So 90 plus percent? I guess. Okay, well, I'm just saying mm-hmm. all my best friends, mm-hmm. and I have dozens and like I grew up in Miami, all my friends, like 5% I'm still hanging with, we're going out, like 5%, meaning the other 95% are married with kids. So you're the anomaly. This is all I'm trying to say, is that you're successful, beautiful, and I don't need no man, I got my own thing, because because you're... It's not a, I don't need no man. It's I have a very <laughs> happy, peaceful life. I love what I do. I get better at what I do every day. And if there's mm-hmm. somebody who can enhance my happiness, mm-hmm. I'm very happy to make that. Well, your career so you're for is your baby. Accessory. Your career is your baby. I would say career. It's um, more of a calling. Her passion. Calling. Yeah. Yes, okay. absolutely. I um, agree with what you were saying just because a lot of my friends are mostly in couples and I do think about like, okay, they're going to have babies soon. And I, like, I don't want to be the single friend forever. So. You won't be, Victoria. You're going to be great. Thank you. <laughs> you're, you've no, I know I You're will. good with dogs. Okay. You're, you're halfway there. By then. the way, <laughs> shout out to Coco. You haven't even noticed that he's been here. She. Okay. That's what I said. Oh, she. Okay. She, did I say? Coco's I a girl. Coco Chanel, I assume. Coco Nut. Coco Nut. <laughs> nice. Well played. Um, We've had a nice, healthy, spirited debate. We've had some laughs. We've had some shaking sure. of the heads. We've had some. I'd like everybody to, you know, give a little cheers. Just to know that we're all, uh, we're all, chin, chin, we're all friends. We're having a good time here. A couple of us yeah. are drinking champagne. A couple <laughs> of us are drinking coffee. Uh, we probably got like 15 minutes left before we wrap up. So let's get into a couple of topics that sure. are trending right now. Mm-hmm. Get your thoughts a little, and then we'll, we'll get into it. So the Super Bowl is this weekend. The Super Bowl is this weekend. Go Rams. You want the Rams because you lived in L.A. Who, do you know who's playing? No. Are you a sports guy? Do you know? Oh, yeah. yeah. I wanted the okay. Niners to win, but now I don't care. No, okay. but, uh, I, I want to see Matt Stafford get a ring. So, yeah, you the want, Rams. Yeah. You want the Rams. I, would, I, I wouldn't be Who against Who is the Matt other team? It's the Cincinnati, Cincinnati Bengals. Thank you for sheer luck. Thank you for the, for, sheer... for the intro. So, um, you know, everybody's trying to get some rings right now. This is what's going on. And I want you to pull this up. I want you to take, take a picture of, the, uh, of this guy. So, the quarterback for the other team... His name is Joe Burrow. The other picture, please. Um, his name is Joe Burrow, and he's got it. Whatever it is, <laughs> homie's got. Okay, this is his second year in the swag. league, I believe. He's got the swag. He won the Heisman, which was the number one uh, best college player. He won the national championship in college. And in his second year, he's taken the literally like the lowly Cincinnati Bengals to uh, the Super Bowl. And like... The, the kids, the kids got swag. It's the iced up necklace. That's okay, that uh, the the iced up ne- which me. we're gonna address the <laughs> the iced up necklace. So uh, I'm gonna read a quote, and then I want to get your guys' thoughts on what this is all comes down to. So uh, the whole thing is that he has the it factor, or what they called irrational confidence. So is this year two in irrational the league? Self confidence. Okay, there it is. So I want to date him. Okay, there, you don't even, he's 22 by the way, 24 by the way. Does in it matter? Range. Yeah, he's over to 19. Um, <laughs> so he once told a reporter. Keep in mind, he's a football player. She says, "How would you do if you played in an NBA game?" Keep in mind, he's a NFL guy. Coco, I was just singing your praises. Um, he goes, "Oh yeah, I would have scored at least 12, 15 points. Not a big deal. Straight face to camera, like swagged out." 
And the reporter goes, oh, I knew this guy was going to be a star just because of his irrational confidence. I love that. Confidence. I love that type of The energy. irrational, he's like, I got this thing. He's got the it factor. So this was my question. How important is it for a man to just have that confidence, that, that swag? There's a song called like BDE, that big dick energy. You know what I'm talking about right now from, yeah. I think, Lazo. Um what is I confidence? What is confidence? I feel do for like you? he's the type of guy that will like make reservations, plan date night. Like he's just so confident, he'll, he'll really? do it all. <laughs> That's what confidence really? will do. Make plans, <laughs> reservations. <Really? laughs> That's what confidence does for and you. And too, for me, like when a guy is confident, I feel more protected because they're like assertive in their choices, and I can kind of be undecisive at times. So I love I love guys like that. Okay. Rebecca, do you have strong feelings on a confident man? What does a confident, ambitious, strong man do for you? I'll tell you a story. This was at a boat show a few years ago. Mm -hmm. It's in Palm Beach, and I saw a man. I have no idea who he was. I was hostessing on a boat, and he was walking down the dock, and he had this white suit on, and he's walking just the way he walked. I had no idea who he was, and I said, I'll know him. I'll know him? I'll know him. Meaning like I'll meet him or it turns out that... I don't know. I'll know him. Biblically. Okay. I'll meet him. I'll, I don't know. I don't know. But I was like... <laughs> Biblically, I'll know that man. But I look at him. I was like, okay. that's my people. All right. We've been friends Goodbye. ever since. Okay. They smashed. Mm -hmm. So... No. <laughs> there was no sexual activity going on there? Oh, he's like really attractive. I've had a crush on him for a long time. But it's... um, No. So what happened? No, we're just is he, we're is great he, friends. Has he got a girl? He has many. He's got many. <laughs> yeah, and we're just like, we're, we're awesome friends. But it's just like, it's that kind of thing. And then when you get to know the background of this person, yeah. why he walks like he does. Yeah. So when I see somebody, I know how I am. And I get told that I'm scary and that I'm intimidating, which is very funny for me. So I need somebody who can, who is like, just really fully in him or herself. Full alpha. I like alphas. Yeah. Okay. Alpha. Well, you're pretty alpha for a female. I mean, let's get real here. No doubt. By the way, mm -hmm. so what's this guy's deal? Give me his age, his career, his thing. You know, what's he working with? I don't think anybody knows his age. Um, Best guess. What does he do? Where does he live? Is he like, 60? No, like maybe... Is he 40? Maybe 50s. Okay, I'm thinking, yeah. he, okay, he's 50s. Mm -hmm. Good looking, I assume. Mm -hmm. Owns the boat. <laughs> works on the boat. Yes. What's he... Here's what I'm going to say. Yeah. Were you employed you're, by you're, him? You're not saying his name, so please be full disclosure. You're not saying his name. So just what's Absolutely his not saying his name. No, um, I, we don't want his name. I have, no, I have no idea what he has because that's not interesting to me. Mm -hmm. But it's probably a lot because of how other people regard him. But that's why we're friends is because mm -hmm. I don't care. I just like him for him because well, you said like you've had a person. crush on him. So why are you friends? Why not not you... a crush? Not like um, not like oh god, I really nothing like that. But just like just really an admiration. He's okay. like he's like the alpha man. When other people look, they aspire to be like him. There they aspire is. to dress like him. They okay. aspire this. How important mm -hmm. is confidence, mm -hmm. Rolo? You need to be the man that other men want to be and other women want to bang. Mm -hmm. Pretty much, and pretty yeah, exactly what you just said here. <laughs> Confidence is a as you as, as Victoria was saying. Confidence is a security benefit. So that's when when somebody makes the reservations for you and does all this stuff and is like, we're going here tonight and we're going to do this tonight. It has a direction. It has a plan. That guy, like, yeah. as you even said, he can protect me. He can provide for me. It that like is exactly what I was talking relax. about ten minutes ago when we were talking about. Maybe you worded it different, but yeah, I love. When you can relax and trust the man. The dude's in control. It's a it's a security but uh, benefit. I'm not just going to do that around anyone. Can you fake confidence? Like, do you know any guys who are like, yeah, I'm, I'm the man. And then it turns out it's Worst. like they're compensating. I hate that. Hate what is that? that? Like the, the false bravado. What are your thoughts on that? I feel like that is everywhere in Miami. And it's the biggest turnoff. Like, give me like what you thought they were and what they turned out to be. Give me that story. Hmm. You go first. I don't know. <laughs> okay. When I look, I can see the difference immediately. Tell me that. Yeah, exactly. You can kind of just tell like yeah. who's flexing. And I don't know. Sometimes even when guys spend money like too lavishly, it's like a turn off because. It's, it's true. There are subtleties to it. And yeah. How they do it like has to be done in like a classy way. But I agree with you where if you see if you're brought into their life and you see how they engage with other people and they're confident in that way, like that's more attractive than them showing you they're confident. Hmm. You know something else with this? The men who I know like that, they are so 
amazing. Their social skills are impeccable. And they're polite to everybody. They're appreciative of everybody. They're just really top-notch individuals. You've, you've said something one time before, like how, how, how can a man improve their market value? Well, uh, okay, so as far you as... You there's three things, well, let's, right? Yeah, well, let's, uh, well, there's uh, make money, make muscles, learn game, and then have frame as a result of that. That's what we were talking about on mm-hmm. Patrick's show. Um, but what you, both of you have just described is what I've called the hypergamous filter. It's finding who's the bullshit artist and who's not. Hmm. Women have classically called this feminine intuition, right? That's, oh, I, I, I just figured him out because I, I have a good eye for you these guys. I can, I can, I can, I can find out what this guy's really about. And I also have training and deception detection. They, they, okay. So. Well, okay. So, but do, let's just say for sake of argument, most women think that they have an, in a, what is it? A feminine intuition. And really where that comes from is we it's, do. Look it's out. the need, it's <laughs> the need to find out whether that guy is for real or he's not for real. And I think that even shows like The Bachelor, for example, is this, it's this testing, it's this constant qualification to see, is he the real, is he the real deal or is he not the real deal? And that's why those shows and anything that sort of uh, triggers that female indignation Mm -hmm. triggers into that idea that um, I got to figure out if this guy is the real thing or he's not. And when women don't have that in their lives, they'll go and find it out, out vicariously through like a TV show or book, romance novels, whatever else. To find out is this guy real or is this guy not mm-hmm. real? Because that in in our evolutionary past, that used to be a matter of life or death. She had to find the right guy, and if he wasn't the right guy, she could die. It was a, literally if, even if she found the right guy and he turned out to be the wrong guy, it could be a matter of life or death. And so it's this sort of like innate wiring in women to want to be able to find out. That's why women are better at communication than men are. When I mean, they understand subtleties, they understand like body language, vocal intonations. Uh, you name it, women can, uh, I mean, this is uh, like proven studies show that like women are better at communication. Men are, tend to be more overt in our communication. Women tend to be more covert as a result of trying to figure but out think, whether those guys are honest or they're not. I think that the world is changing and uh, men are being embraced for their conversation skills. And if you even listen to what we were both attracted to, it mm-hmm. is their conversation skills, their mm-hmm. people skills. So I think the men that develop those Qualities do you think that are a man, at an advantage. So do you think that a man can develop his communication skills so well that he can trick you into bed? Um, <laughs> yes. I think no. Come no, on, because so that's maybe, where, So no. maybe society isn't exactly the whole <laughs> chalking it up to That's me. called spitting game. Like the, a guy on. will, will kind of... I have kinda, something to say here. Go ahead, Mr. Think, Becca. Okay, yeah. this business about game. Yes. Do you really think that the woman doesn't know what's going on? And this is this is the part that is just painful. And this is why I stopped with men for quite a long time. I love the sex. I cannot stand <laughs> the idea that you feel like you tricked me into something. <laughs> no, this, not tricked. Okay. <laughs> tricked. Oh, no, no. Oh, my God. It was such a great game. It's because I have obviously no agency of my own. I had no idea what was going on the entire time. You were just so masculine. You were just so tricky. It's awful. But the... Uh, you want to take this one? Don't hate the player, hate the game. We wouldn't be talking <laughs> about game. game in 2022 if it didn't have some validity to yes. it. Yes. If there wasn't some well, way. That, you could call it swag. You can call it game. You can call it pickup charm. You can call it charm. charm. Yeah. Believe me, you, you can, can call turn it Super up, Bowl trophies. Sure. You can turn, a guy can turn up the charm and turn up the confidence if he's interested in you. He can turn, like, like it's not stagnant. If a guy's like, yeah, I don't really give a shit, like. Like, for instance, my best friend who's like, so Don Juan DeMarco over here is always like, dude, I need you to like wing it up, wing it up, like be my wingman. And if I'm into the girl, I'm like, oh, hey, how you doing? You know, but if I'm not into the girl, I'm like, dude, you're fucking wasting my time. I'm going to sit here with this fucking girl. But you know, I like, think that's so weird. So like, a guy can like... turn up the charm if they're inter- interested in you. So you can might call it game. You might call it charm, whatever it is. But yeah. social skills. But it's I think the same what her thing and in I business, by the way, is we're attracted to mm-hmm. is the guy who's just genuine and all around that person. Like the guy who turns it on and off isn't attractive because we can see through that. So I think like the guy who is genuine is the one who can get it can a guy simulate <laughs> genuine no we could see through it <laughs> that's just what we that were is going true. over that is true that's the one thing i don't think you can fake is genuine Mm-mm. okay yeah. so i mean you can simulate a bunch of other stuff but actually like listening and caring and hearing what you're saying like the the one co- the one class in college that i actually remember taking mm-hmm. that has served me well was a class called listening 
And like the whole point of it was like, you've got one mouth and two ears for a reason. And when someone else is talking, don't just wait to say your turn. Actually listen. Because that's, that's how you'll have dialogue and that's how conversations will you progress. Been, you ever been to a carnival and you walk by uh, the guy who will guess your weight or guess your age of course. At, within a certain yes, you know, yes. tolerance right there? That's called cold reading. Okay, what's so that? So do you not think that, so people can, I mean, they make a good good living off of it, right? I mean, mm-hmm. you go and you, okay, I'll bet you $10 that I can figure out like what your weight is or wh- where you're from even like, or mm-hmm. what's your sign, right? Um, that kind of stuff. There are guys who are very good at cold reading. And what it is, is it's a, it's a skill that is developed over a course of, t- of you know, being out there and doing it mm-hmm. to the point where they, and you know, psychics can do this as well. It's like, they can see what you're about. Listen, like listening, right. Trying to figure you out, knowing what the commonalities are and then being within that area of tolerance right there. So as a result of mm-hmm. understanding and reading you, I know it's, I know it's really insulting because women don't want to think that they're no, easier, to, they're easier to no, figure out, I, but I there's, there are people it. who have that skill to read you and know what you're about. Good no, salesmen do it all the skill. time. No, people I really do have this people skill. People definitely mm-hmm. have that skill. Mm-hmm. I just, um, I don't live my life that way. So I, but I know people have that skill. Like a lot of people from New York. I'm not saying it's I right found, or it's wrong. I'm saying there are yeah. people who can do that. And people who do it really well, However, you wouldn't know the difference. I think that you should never project your judgments onto a person just because like, I just have a different belief than... Is it a judgment to say, I can figure out you're 29 years old just because you're walking through the carnival? Um, I don't want to go to the carnival. Like, where's this going? <laughs> I don't know, but here, let's, what I mean yeah. is, like, somebody can read you and understand stuff about you just by looking at you. You guys have just said this a minute ago. I can always sniff out a faker, right? Well, how do That's you do true. that? You have to do a judgment call to see that this guy is a faker. Am I right? I think you're judgment right. Judgment call. And as I judgment said, call. I also have... It, here, let's uh, let's we're, we got to wrap up in five minutes. Let's get through one last topic. I want to get your thoughts on this, and uh, and then we'll 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 uh, all kiss and make up and and get along and have a drink after this. So, this last topic has to do with marriage, which we know some people are a fan of and some people are not. Uh, but real quick, there was you know the rapper Lil Wayne, Lil mm-hmm. Wayne. He recently tweeted. This is his tweet over here. He goes, "Man, I need a wife. I'm getting too wealthy." Okay, and I was like, all right, this is a money show. It's also a dating show. This seems like the perfect topic to bring up. So real quickly, what do you think he meant by that? He gave no context. I, I think he's got a girl, but I don't think he's married. What does what does a guy mean, a wealthy, famous, some might call it powerful man, mean when he says, I need a wife, man. I'm getting too wealthy. What are your thoughts? Dr. Nicholson, would you like to take this one off real quick? I couldn't guess. Okay, but give us a guess. Okay, here's my guess. He has... It's something to go through life and not have all of the experiences that you want. Mm -hmm. He likely has had all of the experiences that he wants. So now he's like, you can have anything. You can buy anything. You can get anyone. So it's not a matter of, can I get this girl? Just like, how many do I want? How many on which day? It's not a thing anymore. He He can do it. So when you surpass that then you're looking for somebody you can trust and you're looking for somebody you can kind of hold close to you. Mm. It's a different thing. So if he's growing and he's looking for the rest of his life, this is how I would interpret it, is he's like, he's going to have his life outside, but maybe he wants to be able to replenish when he retreats with somebody. So I think, for someone who took a guess, you fucking kind of nailed that thing. All right, Victoria, what do you got for I Lil Wayne over here? I think what the doctor is saying <laughs> is that he fucked bitches, got money. It is. And so. now he's ready to wipe up his favorite hoe. That's it. It's called mm-hmm. FBGM. He did that. Just say, okay, so he's gonna so, wife up his favorite hoe from Queen now, Victoria. Now, his yeah, own. he he wants a wife. He's too wealthy. He wants to have value in more things. So he wants a wife to help him spend the money or spend his time, a little bit of both. 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 You think he's trying to save money on his taxes, maybe as a well, dependent? Well, I, I thought it was all about hey. love. I thought it was all about commitment so, and sharing and well, life plans. Rolo, man. why don't you take it from We're here? We're allowed the, to I, have fun, my God. Uh, okay. yes. As the as the as the as the, uh, the, voice the rational male. Right, so um, 
he's flexing on marriage. That's what he's doing. He's saying, you know, marriage is very expensive. That's what he's saying. We divorce is very expensive. Yeah. You know what? What's the joke? You know, I'm going to skip the marriage part and just buy a woman a house and, and, and <laughs> give her alimony like that. Like so, these skip, girls have been offered multiple times. Apparently, and it's a, it, it it comes from a transactional nature uh, or transactional approach. Let's just say to relationships, and really, that's it's just a flex on marriage she needs at a that wife. time. And and so, like when you look I at say, yeah. when you look at like the the top. The, the richest women in the world right now, if you go and you look at the Forbes like list or Morgan Stanley or whatever, you look at the top 10 richest women in the world, every single one of those women has made it through two ways. What do you think those are? Inheritance? Divorce or, yeah. and inheritance. Yeah. They, they didn't start those businesses. They're running businesses that they inherited mm. or through divorce they came into possession of. But every single one in that top 10 list. The Mars Chocolate family. And uh, L'Oreal. Divorce and, and, uh, and inheritance. How about this? Let me throw something your way. You're saying top women? May I ask? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I've lost my way. Yeah. What relevance does that have to do with what we were talking because about? Because there's flexing on marriage right Flexing here. on marriage. So this expensive. is a transactional thing? Yes. What, what happened? But well, it's a so joke. Wait, it's so that's joke. your interpretation. It's a joke to say, it's a joke to say that it's very expensive. It's, it's a joke <laughs> to say that I have all this money and I need to bleed off some of this money with a woman. That's what it's saying. Right, exactly. Saying. Is there any, it's like a joke. Speaking of the, yeah. let's, let's, let's uh, flip it. Mm -hmm. You said the, the rich women. Um, is there any reason why you think three of the top five richest men in the world mm -hmm. uh, just got divorced? Bill Gates, mm -hmm. Elon Musk, and now Jeff Bezos. Well, Elon have Musk, all been, is Elon Musk has been to case. Yeah. Why have they all gotten divorced recently? Because they're blue pill and beta. They're so focused on their money and their their game and their what they're you know what they do. Most of these guys are like very like single minded when it comes to like if you look at Jeff Bezos and you look at his pictures like when he started Amazon and where he is right now, he's like tried to alpha himself up. But who did he get with right after mm -hmm. he divorced uh, Mackenzie Bezos? He got with Lauren Sanchez, who is a career predator woman. Yeah, yeah, looking for the looking for guys. Exactly like Jeff for the Bezos. BVD. Exactly like bigger, Jeff. better deal, bigger and better dollars. That's for bigger, sure. Better dollars. And then so when you look at, um, I don't know what's going to happen with with uh, with uh, Bill Gates, but remember Bill mm -hmm. Gates had a mistress that send him over that, that <laughs> Melinda <laughs> that Melinda Gates said it's okay, it's cool, go and bang her for like once a, once a, a week every year or something okay. like that. And they had that arrangement. Elon Musk think, is though, just like... Elon Musk is like he's just breeding. <laughs> he doesn't know it. He's just breeding right now developing aliens all right that guys Ooh. that's that's where we're gonna end it okay um what i would like for the people watching is do us a favor who did you agree with who did you disagree with <laughs> we're gonna do who are you a fan of who do you want to see back who do you want to see not get the rose on the bachelor or whatever <laughs> not to use that reference um but i really appreciate you I guys being rose. here Thank I think you. all of you killed it in your respective ways. I've learned a lot more about you. I think you're doing great. Thank you. You're a way cooler than I actually thought you would be. So respect to you. Yeah, you are. I don't know you that well. And I thought you were very cool. And Rolo, I know you're a stud. And I think you're a stud and uh, respect. But leave a comment below. The whole, you know, the YouTube thing. Like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Da -da 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 -da. But I really appreciate everybody. I hope you learned something. Learned to help you in the dating world. Mm -hmm. Learned to help you uh, in the making money world. Or at least, you know, what it takes to be a confident male that uh, someone like Dr. Nicholson would be attracted <laughs> to, respect. And as always, last but not least, save that money. We'll see you next time.